I am telling the truth. I don't care! Wow, I wish yesterday wasn't April 1st because apparently a lot of people thought it was a big joke. In fact, everything going on uh, is the opposite of that. It's very serious. Now, I tried to leave it be. I spoke to Chris at length via direct message, imploring him to handle this in private. Chris being Tim Pool's brother. He hasn't stopped. He continues to post. He's, you know, engaging in uh, PR for his uh, cause. And I can't hold that against him. Um, you know, he's now enlisted a lot of people to support him, which is his right completely. Um, in my conversations with Chris, he's a very poor liar. And anybody who's taking up his banner in this seems to be tainted. Uh, in my brief looking, obviously, I'm sure there are people that support Chris based on the facts, but a loud contingent of fans of him seem to lead in with, yeah, I really hate Tim Pool, or I really hate uh, Quarter Pounder. This is this is definitely, you know, Tim definitely screwed him over. You know, it's not exactly a big-brained take. Uh, a lot of people who present themselves as some sort of, you know, galaxy brain that has it all figured out and and uh, thinks they always know better than everything, uh, always seems to show their true colors when it comes to breaking things down and accepting that, hey, maybe I don't like this person, but I mean, obviously the facts are the facts. Now, when you talk to Chris, he changes the subject. He gets slippery. Uh, to be clear, was Chris the originator of Subverse? Yes. That was never in contention. Never. He keeps going back to this idea that I created it, therefore it's mine forever. Forget all these other messages, which I'm about to show you, that show I gave up and I gave it away and I never did any work and I didn't care about it until after it was worth money, which I will show you in great detail. Uh, Chris did nothing with the company. He sat around Tim's house for months rent-free while Tim, along with two other people, maybe more, built the company. Once the company was worth something, all of a sudden Chris demanded money. It's very, very simple. Uh... You know, Chris will try to complicate things with emotional opinions or look at this thing Tim did to me that was really mean. None of that matters. Obviously, there are personal elements of this between Tim and Chris, which uh, I won't touch on. There are some pretty spicy uh, back and forth that are out there, uh, but are none of my business and not really relevant to this. I'm not a lawyer. Um... To me, though, Chris has basically consistently lied the entire time and lied very poorly. It's like he's used to arguing with people that don't think, that uh, just respond via emotion. Kind of like an SJW or something. I don't know any of his personal beliefs, but that's how he argues. Uh, this, this is cut and dry. Chris has said beyond, uh, you know... Whatever he says beyond the clear facts that I talk about in this video is to poison the well, garner your sympathy, to say Tim is mean, and to drum up support in the people that don't like Tim. Uh, and there's plenty of them. There's just as many people that don't like me. And now that I stuck my nose in it, there's twice as many people. But I do feel bad for him. I really do. I feel bad for Chris. Um, I think that he's carrying a lot of guilt and regret over... Uh, basically letting a great opportunity go by him. This happened to me. My first job out of college, you know, I had a great opportunity where I could have been an owner in a company and been very wealthy by now. Um, and I let my ego get into it. And I was more interested in going out and partying because I was only you know, 24, 25, but I'd be set by now. I wouldn't even be probably making YouTube videos. I do think about it every once in a while. Um, but the messages contained in this video will paint a very strong uh, picture in contradiction to Chris's allegations that essentially he, he was there every day on the front lines and then evil Tim Pool and these other two people just stole his company and somebody paid $100,000 to get into the company and um, then edge him out. None of this is true and I will prove all of that. 
I didn't want to release all this stuff, but um, I've had Tim's blessing from the very start, and I'm going to do so. Tim had many attempts uh, to take care of his brother, from offering him a free place to live to offering him money. Uh, despite many, he never wanted to work with Subverse. Despite many pleas from his brother, Tim, uh, let me start with a very clear, very clear example of a conversation that would show this, right? In this first message chain, we have Chris saying, you can have Subverse.net if you still want it. I'm not paying anymore or having anything to do with it. I got mad because you yelled at me in public, but I was actually mad that you didn't include me and, and, and I knew the domain was useless. It was only getting 30 views a day or less. I felt like I was just, it was just pretending to be useful. I was just pretending to be useful. If you still want it, let me know, but I'm not going to pay for anything anymore. To which Tim replies, Bill and Emily wanted your help and you just, and, can, and you can just tell me what I need to pay you. So here he's, he's saying, what do you want for it? All I had was a domain, and they were talking about moving the articles to Minds. I'm sorry for getting mad and yelling yesterday. I didn't mean to be a jerk. Bill and Emily want you to run the written stuff, Minds, or Subverse. Chris replies, I still don't like that Emily is now a co-founder of Subverse. Even if it's a different Subverse, it feels bad. I don't want anything to do with it anymore. I'm poor and I need to, make, I need to focus on making Reactor profitable. Subverse is just a distraction. Tim replies, you're still a co-founder, but Emily is working 14 hours a day. If you don't want to be involved, I can have Bill transfer everything to his accounts. At any rate, I can send you money for any project that you need a budget or hiring. But we need to transfer the site, I guess. So this one conversation immediately proves that Chris at no point is refuting the fact that he hasn't contributed anything to uh, subverse, um, and he's fine. I mean, look, he should work on Reactor. You know, a, a single YouTube channel, just ask Tim. It could be huge. It could be very, very, make him very wealthy. He's also made several claims that it isn't about the money. Well, why did you demand $333,000? And then four weeks later, realizing you had no case, demand 20000 This is just days ago, by the way. Here's a tweet. I'll also add this was never about me wanting money. The money was about me being able to forgive him if he paid me for the equity he took. So it wasn't about money, but if he gives me money, I'll forgive him. I would be able to forgive him. I wanted to forgive him, but couldn't unless he righted the wrong, gave him money. He goes on to say, adding to this, some people still don't get it. I never signed anything. There's other claims, of course, uh, that, you know, that Tim stole stuff. And if we can look at this archive, he says, going over everything, I wanted to share the proof. And I realize 99% of it is unnecessary. The accusation is in 2018, Emily and Tim joined me in Subverse and we formed it into an LLC. Then after working on it for over a year, Tim, Emily, and Bill took the intellectual property that I originally created and grew, and then grew it uh, with the help and transferred to a new corporation formed in Connecticut. Again, none of this is in question. What is in question is a, a domain name, which is essentially what you brought to the table in all these arguments, is not like you invented a cure for cancer and somebody took it and is profiting from it. You didn't invent a can opener. Subverse was worthless and you admitted that without the many hours that the other people put in while you were playing World of Warcraft. How about the claim that Chris would leak who Tim voted for? Give me a bunch of retweets and I'll tell everyone who Tim voted for. As I proved yesterday, Tim didn't even vote that year. He was out of state. So how does Chris respond to this? By saying, it was just a prank, bro. It's just a prank, bro. But then, privately, in direct messages with me, he leaked a conversation between him and Tim where Tim is joking about Trump winning. Bottom line, 
Chris never had any information about Tim, who Tim voted for. What he had was a simple conversation and nothing to do with voting. When called out, he reverted to, it's just a prank bro. I will now show Chris didn't care about his company at all and through various Facebook message conversations made it very clear that he handed everything over. A fair criticism here is that a lot of these snips don't contain the entire context. My hope is that the sheer volume of them and the sheer consistency in Chris's position that he did nothing but wants money will be very obvious. The whole context for sure would prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, and you might hang on to that. There's always a contingency of, of people that are like, well, there's a 0.001% chance there's some crazy piece of information that isn't shown here, so that disproves everything. Well, those people, I, you're just never going to convince. This is for rational people. Here in this picture, Chris is giving Subverse.net to Tim Pool on June 20th. Again, okay, I wasn't pl f planning on phrasing it like that, though. Well, you did. You are the sole owner of Subverse. This is according to Tim. Thanks. Sorry for doing it. We are going to change all the socials to something else. Thumbs up. You never paid me for driving you. Could I get it? $40 to cover the gas use. Tim pays him the $40. Thanks. He goes on to say, You can have Subverse.net if you want it. I'm not paying anymore or having anything to do with it. I got mad because you yelled at me in public, but I was actually mad you didn't include me, and I knew the domain was useless. It was only getting 30 views a day or less. I felt like I was pretending to be useful. If you still want it, let me know, but I'm not going to pay for stuff anymore. Continues. Here you see Chris accept that he's done nothing for the company and spent the last year playing video games. Chris, I'm deleting your subverse from my subverse website and taking my subverse to a different direction, just so you know. Essentially, there are many companies that have the same name in this world. There are, you don't have exclusive rights to a particular name. So what they're going back and forth is saying, basically, Tim's saying, okay, well, I'm just going to call my company Subverse. You can have your dead company called Subverse. There'll be two Subverses. You know, there's also a adult video game called Subverse. And there's probably other companies called Subverse out there. Tim replies, what's your problem? Chris, I literally moved out here to help you uh, here to build Subverse with you. And you Zuckerberg me and gave Emily ownership. Tim replies, you didn't do anything. Then Chris replies, because you kicked me out. So this is an acknowledgement that he didn't do anything. Tim replies, no, because we've been working for over a year and you've been playing video games. Chris replies, I broke my hand, whatever. Okay, so again, no, again, he accepts that, no, he didn't work for the company at all for over a year, maybe occasionally. Uh, and he did, in fact, play video games for a full year. Um, he goes on to say, it sucks when your own brother kicks you out of his subverse, doesn't it? You basically stole my brand and kicked me out. Fine. You can use my domain. If Emily gets the same share as me, absolutely no reason for her to be an owner. Tim replies, you're too volatile. Instead of doing things, you flip out. Here's Chris telling Tim to take the YouTube channel. How about that? Here's Chris. So start a different business. Tim, we still don't even use the website. Chris, you don't take the business that I let you in and kick me out, Tim replies. And you're acting like we care. You're sitting on a dead no domain and acting like we care. He says, so we agree. I'm deleting everyone now. Tim replies, yes, we agree. You've done nothing over the past six months, but for some reason got mad like you owed something. He goes on, you started a YouTube channel with my brand name. And, he's, and Tim says, and so did a prawn video game. Your channel, he goes, the channel is yours. Go for it. Okay, so again, Chris agrees. You can have the YouTube channel. Are you saying they might want the domain? He says, no, I don't even want it. He goes on to say, I'm also canceling the emails to my useless domain. How about another exchange where Chris clearly does not refute he did nothing for the site for 16 months and suddenly when things start happening, he wants money. Chris says, you hired a guy who deleted all of my original work, since then rebuilt the site. You hired a guy who delittered, deleted my website and locked me out. Tim replies, so in like 16 months, you did a couple of weeks of work while I've been working every day. Chris replies, you've been working every day on Timcast. Okay, again, Chris admits he didn't do any work here. Tim replies, yep, and I got the deal to fund more content and decided to allocate that to Subverse. 
And he replies, yeah, grats, bro, you do you. And he says, then instead of working, you just festered and started complaining. Chris says, you literally dropped me from my own brand and gave Emily ownership. It doesn't work that way. He says, you weren't doing anything. Again, another conversation continues. You can see pretty clearly Chris in the conversations, removing himself willingly. Tim's saying, you're still a co-founder, but Emily is working 14 hours a day. If you don't want to be involved, I can have Bill transfer everything. At any rate, I can send you money for any project that needed budget or hiring. This, again, continues to fly in the face of Chris saying that Tim never gave him money and uh, anything like that. There are several examples I'm sh I've shown and will show that he has given him money. Uh, but we need to transfer the site. He goes on to say, Chris says, I'll take my credit card off and make you and Emily the admins. Tim says, okay, can you add me back and I'll send you extra money to pay you back for what you already spent on it? Chris says, yeah. Uh, and then Chris says, for tax purposes, wouldn't it be smarter if you directly paid for this stuff so it's a business expense? Tim says, you write it off. I sent you money. I'm not worried about it. I'll eat the taxes. So Tim, again, not only has offered, but sent him money and even gone out of the way to say, don't even worry about it. You can even write off the expenses. So he's going above and beyond to give his brother the best possible financial compensation he can here. He's indicated that Tim has never paid for anything, but several direct conversations fly in the face of that. Chris saying, hey, can I buy money? have money to buy some video editing files? I'm broke, but could really use them to upgrade vid quality. Sends him, uh, I'll send Emily the files for Subverse 2. I'd also like to buy a video transition pack for 29 bucks. How does licensing work? Their premiere, blah, blah, blah. How much do you need? 80 bucks sent. Now, I don't take this next section lightly. I don't think I've ever shared private DMs, but in this case, I'm making a very my very first exception, hopefully my last, because it goes directly to supporting my position and debunking an active narrative against my own coverage. This is a conversation I had with Chris yesterday. Chris says, it was never about money. That's why I didn't take his hand out. Okay, so he offered you money and you didn't take it, but now you're demanding money. I replied, then why are you demanding 333K? Why did you demand another 20K recently? He says, scroll up. If Bill got 10% for 100K, my 33% was worth 300K. This is a common lie uh, that he has continued to spread that Bill invested $100,000. He did not. Uh, Bill did get some percentage of the company, I, I guess. Um, so what he's saying is, well, Bill gave you 100 grand, even though he didn't which means the company's worth a million dollars, give me 333,000. It doesn't work that way and none of that is true. I said, that was long after you quit. He says, I didn't demand another 20K. I lowered it to 20K in hopes we could end this. To which I replied, but I thought it wasn't about money. What exactly do you want? Be very specific. Maybe this can end today. Before I ever wanted to make this video, I was, gonna, I was trying to mediate, moderate. He then says, the money to me would be getting what I'm due for the five years of expenses I paid for the biz. Now, again, I've seen, I've already shown you several conversations where Tim has offered him money and never even pushed back. Every time he's like, give me money, he's like, okay, here you go. I need gas money, sent. I need plug-in money, sent. I need money for this, sent. Uh, so I, I said, what is that number? He never gave me one. So he's lying. Again, this 100K is a fake number. Bill never invested 100K by his own word, which I showed you in the first video. He did purchase advertising or consulting. You can see the insidious nature of the entire valuation built on a lie that Chris is perpetuating to build his narrative of $1 million. He perpetuates this lie further by saying, anyways, I didn't suggest him pay me 333K. This is because when we formed the LLC, we neglected to note which equity we owned. And according to attorneys I spoke with, this means we each own 33%. If Bill, now he's saying if, but before he said he did, paid 100K and got 10%, this values a biz at a million. That's actually not, even that math isn't right. Um, so 333K would be equal to 33% of my equity. Despite all that, I didn't even care about the money. Now, interestingly enough, uh, you know, Chris goes out of his way to paint Tim as some kind of monster. Uh, would a monster pay for his brother's $8,000 dog surgery? Um, you know, Probably not. Here's a conversation that proves it. Hey, they want to do an MRI. It's going to cost 8K and I need half today. Hey, I need to pay somehow right now. Yo, just finished. 
Hello? How can we pay? Can you transfer the money to me? And Tim paid him. Now, I realize that I'm going hard here, and that's because I want this to be the last video I make on it. I want this to be over with. I will show you what I shown you what's driving all of this. Essentially, his brother is broke, and now he's reduced his demand from 333k to just 20k. Not exactly what someone would do if they had a strong legal case. My position here is obviously in defense of Tim, but really it's in defense of the truth. I do wish Reactor, Chris, all the best in the world. But these messages prove my point, prove the facts uh, so easily and so clearly that I don't know how anyone would refute them. You admit that you never did any work for the company and now you're coming skulking around asking for money. Tim may be a mean brother, as you put it, even though it seems like he had no problem handing you cash anytime you needed it and no problem putting you up with a place to live for free and no problem buying you whatever you needed. But uh, I guess maybe there are other ways that he was mean. Maybe he lorded it over you. That's possible. I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm not going to speculate. But the fact remains that you could say what you want about Tim, but to me, it's clear you abandoned this company and now are only just circling around asking for money. You wanted receipts. You pushed me and now you got them. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.